Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I, I just I want to apologize so much that I I was not able to make it through Spyro. For any of you who uh, didn't hear me just talk about uh, the game a little bit ago, um, it just gave me terrible, terrible, terrible motion sickness. Um, some games do wind up doing that to me. Uh, Subnautica notably did that. Um, there's many 3D games I play that don't give me motion sickness. Um, oh, I'm just bummed because I know a lot of people have been really excited for me to play that game. Or, excuse me, to play... Um, uh, I shouldn't say play that game. I meant to play uh, just a uh, general non Magic non Dota games. Oh, oh, fuck! Well, I mean, let's just do some stupid shit in Magic, shall we? That seems like a good build. Um, I I'm trying to think of how I want to tune up this deck, how I want to adjust it. There's a lot of elements about it that I like. Let's 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 start investigating and think about ways we might change stuff. Scourge Line is suggesting the brawl. Yeah, maybe maybe we do some brawl later today. I feel like the that experience of playing <sighs> Spyro. Sorry, boy. I, I I actually I feel a little a little woozy. Um, um, I think that the um, experience of playing that game is a good reminder to me the way that three um, D games can potentially impact players. Because I, I incidentally play a lot of 2D games. What the fuck is a wild growth walker? Haven't seen this one in a while. I think I'd rather do this. Because, like, you know, I, I have played Dark Souls, loved Dark Souls. There's plenty of 3D games we played, like Subnautica, that I found great. And when I got the right field of view settings, I didn't feel sick. But, like, field of view, jerkiness of camera, it makes me realize how incredibly important that is. And something that I have not actually spent enough time just thinking about. Gregor McTwist just gifted tens on this fine Friday. Mmm. Throw another punch? And you're gonna get oh shit, I forgot to hit this button here. Well, not the biggest deal. Seems pretty good to pop this treasure map. My god, I feel so sick. How was Outer Wilds in terms of motion sickness? It was fine. Absolutely no problem at all. It was great. What happened to Spyro? Motion sickness. Good old fashioned tragic motion sickness, man. Would it be silly to stream from a couch and play on a TV that's farther away? Um, Time to sleep for a I wouldn't week. say silly so much as is so much as incredibly difficult to. You know, just like moving my setup from one place to another. So here's something I'm observing about this deck. I I did an attempt this game to do something a little bit different than I normally would, which was to get a Chandra down sooner. 
And I think that that is an incorrect play. I think that it's more important for me to keep the board controlled and to think of Chandra as a turn three, or baby Chandra, as a way to pressure a deck that doesn't build a board, like an Esper Control. But a, a, a turn five play against an aggro deck to let me recur something from my graveyard. Snowman Wizard says, I'm a bit conflicted with MTGA. I really love playing Magic, but I'm put off by the necessity of spending infinite IRL money on it. This this game is actually pretty pretty great for free to play. Pretty damn great for free to play. The reason being because it's collectible and not tradable, everything's way cheaper. Um, Stoneman Wizards says they they get me on those drafts, haha. -ha. The drafting is actually pretty generous, and I'm someone who used to play the. $14 entry fee drafts on Magic the Gathering Online. So I know the agony of that. They're proportionally a lot cheaper here. Get another blast zone in there. Really nice. Really, really, really nice. Yeah, in this game, I obviously just pay up front anytime a new season releases. Eric, co-owner of Day9 TV, um, he goes free to play. Super Fluxus has loved you on the Tasteless podcast, man. Had to come find you and sub. Looking forward to more content. Oh, well, that's very thoughtful of you, Super Fluxus. Thank you. And I hope you toss some money my brother's way. Even though it's more important that you give me the money first. You know, I'm the younger one. I've had a harder time. You know, of course, he's had a few more years on this earth. But of course, I want you to support my brother, you know. Great. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Great. Now I can actually scry this at the end of the turn. Perfect. What do you think of Nick selling his bathwater? Is Nick selling his bathwater? Your friend of you don't know I went on my brother's podcast and we talked about some pretty serious feely things. He is? Well, I... I really? Makes $2,500 Patreon reward is his bathwater. I mean that's that's kind of funny. I think you will find my notes helpful. That's kind of funny, but I don't think it's the most funny because someone else already did that. And the fact that there was a first that did it makes me be like nod to the first, you know. What's even happening in this game? I haven't been paying attention. Yeah, I, I even told a relatively Actually, I shouldn't say relatively. It was a very frightening experience of a fan who heard that I was going to be at uh, one of my favorite arcades, Arcade Infinity, and showed up and physically assaulted me. Scary times. Yeah, that's definitely what we want. I think maybe I don't... I think... I Okay, I think I need to just be a little bit more careful with how I do stuff. 
I'm gonna just chill a wee bit because I can pump blast zone to a two. I can recur both the lava coil and the Chandra's triumph with the minus two here. Oh my god, I can't even, I can't even begin to stress how nauseated I feel after that game. God, and that I mean it's just that's just fascinating to me that that happened that way. What's more better? So we're taking nine damage. So if I put two on here, we'll have to pop two of these. Then next we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I won't quite have enough to crack. Yeah, I think I just have to do X equals one here. Damn, I can't feel to ruin that one. Pretty clever. Come on, Chandra, Casting down my elemental. There's no problem. Fire can't solve. Oh my gosh. Ace <laughs> versus how many times a week do you get recognized on the street? Is it mostly a pleasant experience? Well, I, I really my life is very limited in terms of human interaction, by and large. I wake up, I exercise at my apartment's um, gym. I stream from home, and I walk to the grocery store. That, and that's about what I do. Most of my social interaction is by calling people on the phone or hanging out in Discord, uh, which I'm super happy about. Well, that sucks. Mostly, step aside or be crushed. This is a deck against which I would really love to have a Star of Extinction. And I have three in the sideboard. How lovely. Hermagird, it's lovely. So, I, I, I wouldn't say it happens particularly... Nice, that's a really cute play. I wouldn't say it happens particularly often. 
Uh, but I'd say 100% of the time, if I'm hanging out with somebody, it happens. <laughs> Creates a disproportionate impression that I'm well known. This thing, Jensen, so dang, I missed the gift sub notice. Yeah, there's been a good amount of gift sub Ds here today. Hey, Phil Moody, happy near two year. I know I noted this somewhere. Spyro turning the cards. Yeah, I just got motion sickness. I, I should really remember this. The, la the, the last several 3D games I've played have felt okay. Like Golf with Friends, Overwatch. Oh, God. I just start to feel, like, dizzy, and then I start yawning like crazy, man. What a cool deck. I love these Command the Dread Horde decks. I think they're so awesome. No! You can't do it! Oh! can't kill that, and that's really the only threat. Because, I mean, I, I, I can do this, you know. Get a bunch of these. Um, still don't think I can win. I, I actually kind of want to just permanently cut the shocks from this deck. Maybe run, like, Lightning Bolts or something that, that is a little more damage. Maybe have some sort of mid mid-size Sweeper. Alright, so let's see here. Shocks are just not especially great. Lava Coils are especially great. Star of Extinctions are especially great. What do I think about Fry? There's an interesting question. I think that this Chandra is not particularly useful. If I am against someone whose board is empty a lot, or uh, against a really small vampire's deck where I'm looking to just ping all things, this is great. Um, you know, like, the reason it's really good against empty boards is I can use this Chandra Acolyte of Flame, summon two one ones, give each of them plus two plus oh, and just be popping for six damage a turn. It's very, very nice. So I think I'm actually going to opt to cut this. And I'm going to run a pair of fries. Ilana 123124 says, Having a one mana removal spell is important against land war elf decks and aggro decks, though. Maybe Shivan Fire? That way you can still chonk big things for four if you need to. Um, well, so there's. There's. The attitude that you're having really, I feel like, is the intuitive attitude that I felt when I first saw the deck list. I was like, oh, yeah, of course. It's good against aggro, good against land war elves, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And in a way, yes, that's technically true, but here's here's what I'm thinking. First of all, let's ignore the Shiv and Fire comment. Um, it doesn't shoot Planeswalkers, which is a huge downside of Shiv and Fire. Um, and that's, that's it basically makes it unplayable in this this here world where there's so many Planeswalkers. Unless I'm concerned about Shiv and Fire, N-Y-F-O-S, deal two damage to target creature. Ah, yes, great. Um, the, the thing that I am more so feeling is that, okay, Lanor Elf, right? Seems like a pretty cool guy. By the way, treasure map, Star of Extinction, perfect. So here's, here's my logic. Um, is Shock good against vampires? Yes. Let's ignore that for a moment. Is it good against... Lanor Elf decks, and let me stress Lanor Elf decks compared to Lanor Elf the card. I I don't think that it's actually turning out to be very good versus Lanor Elf decks because what are they? They tend to be Bant ramp decks that are or Simic ramp decks that are running Lanor Elf and Paradise Druid, which I can't hit with Shock, and um. Leafkin Druid, which is a 0-3, which I can't kill with Shock, right? Why would I typically want 
a shock? Well, because I would be able to gut the momentum on a lot of the typical aggro Llanowar elf decks. Like, if it was an aggro Llanowar elf deck, something like a gruel aggro that's looking to play the Llanowar elf and then get like a turn two gruel spellbreaker or a turn two legion war boss, that extra turn seems really, really, really good. But I, I just don't think that that's really how a lot of these decks seem to be formulated. It's a very good one to get. And so I'm starting to wonder if maybe there are other ways for me to think about that slot. Like, let's imagine that there was a red sweeper that was three mana that said deal three damage to everything. You know, like Deafening Clarion. Yeah, maybe instead of the shocks, I want to run a couple Deafening Clarions instead. Oh, for God's sake, I didn't put the stop down. Doesn't actually matter, though. So that's, so Elano, that's my sort of logic of maybe I, could, I should put like some flame sweeps in there. Would still be good against the vampire aggro decks. And it can help me hit. Does that suck? Yes. Yes, it does. I'm good at what I do. And what I do, I hope the day is yours. I'm looking like a dead dude. Oh, this actually helps a good bit. So what, what do you think? I'm trying to think of, like, so, maybe there's some weird red sweepers I could look at. Oh my god. Is this ginger tea? This is, oh my god. But what, what a sweet cat to have made me ginger tea for my motion sickness. Thank you, sweetheart. Love you too. Oh, do you hear that little meowing cat? She's so happy. All right. I did it. Land here would have been relatively wonderful, but it's all right. Chandra's regulator. I'm probably not going to use the regulator on all this stuff. Having double star of extinction is so good now that I have this up. Part of me actually wonders about just main decking star of extinction. Right? Just main decking star of extinction. Why not, huh? It's incredibly good against all the green decks. It's incredibly good against Esper decks. Not just incredibly good, but it's pretty, pretty damn good. To me, very well. I did it. It's 
not great against mono red. I almost want to put like main deck the Star of Extinctions and then have Shocks and Shivan Fires in the sideboard, something like this. I feel like that makes a wee bit more sense to me. We'll do some reformulating. The Alana says there's a first eruption. What is the first eru eruption? Oh, that's a weird one. It's Fry just for Hydroid Crisis in this matchup, as well as Tamiyo. Ace for says when you activate the regulator artifact, you have to pay slash gain loyalty points for the copied ability. Uh, you actually don't, which is great. Look, I have the treasure map, Star of Extinctions. This is great. I also quite like Cavalier of Flame. I think one of is the correct number, though. It's a, it's a touch expensive. Are there some other very sturdy, solid red creatures that we might consider in the two, three, four mana slot? Chain Whirler. Okay, what do we think about Chain Whirler? The kind of one that I'm thinking of is like maybe a... Like one of those like pretty, pretty dang reliable, solid cards like... Um, that's extremely good. I'm going to keep that. Go ahead and get my utility cards down early since I'm going to be able to get to double and triple mountains soon. Let's go ahead and put this here. I'm struggling against specific decks. I'm going to call it the heavy green decks that have like a lot of planeswalkers in them. Great. Trying to think of something that isn't as like shock feels good only against really aggro decks, and really I feel like is is not helping me particularly much in these. It's not really helping me very much in these kinds of circumstances. Like against green decks, it's not helping me very much against Esper decks. I was thinking maybe something like Lightning Strike. Good old fashioned Lightning Strike. Oh, oh my gosh, everyone. I'm so sorry. I forgot to turn the extensions back on since we were just playing Spire of the Dragon. See, here's, here's why I have spoken so much about will not fail. getting Star of Extinction in early. The land fights for us. Now, I mean, now we're going to one million for one. I'm going to bin her because it's really just Fry that she can recur. Let's hit this one. Like, like, see, this is so good against green ramp decks. This is so good against Esper Tempo. <laughs> okay. If you haven't heard of me, get ready to meet my flame. 
burning desire to finish you. Keep the other blast zone hidden for now. Nice. It took me a second, but I figured it out. <laughs> Fredin says, hey, Dan, you've often asked your chat to try and phrase a question to you better. Uh, like, why this line of play versus that line of play? Instead of, doing that line of play is stupid. I used this recently with a coworker, and it was a much better experience. Do you have any other tips when speaking to people? And you have a conflict of ideas? Um, yeah, there's one that, oh my god. I mean, I like, I think so much about speaking and communication and all that stuff like just so 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 much about it and so i mean i was very aware of what was happening as it was happening but it didn't change the fact that i was just like damn dude that is good you are good dude um the person i was talking to let me um let, let let's say the person in question uh wanted to talk about issues with mono red oops let's say you wanted to talk about issues with mono red I'm not going to discard any of these these are just this is just an insane set of cards Let's say that the person I was trying to want to express issues with mono red. Here's here's the way that this person framed this stuff to me. This person went, okay, I want to get your opinion on this idea. I, I don't necessarily think this. This is not like my opinion, but I've heard people say things like mono red is way weaker than bant ramp, or you know, uh, mono red isn't as good as you know esper tempo. It just doesn't have as much oomph. You know this sort of thing. I mean, wh how, how would you respond to that sort of comment? You see what he did? He didn't say it's my thing. He said, there, there's that thing over there. And let's let's together look at that thing over there. It's like very, very slick. Also, Ziffnab84 with the gift Aronis. Thanks, Ziffnab. Five of them. It says, and after this, I'm going to bed. Welcome, everyone. Remember to say hello in chat. Damn right. Salvarius, J Tunes I, Amanda Bear 94, City Fires, and AIM 64407. Come say hey. Come say hey. Come say hi. I don't bite. I'm a friendly guy. Okay, so let's let's cut these and let, let's think about how we might. Like, here's a potential cyborg's uh, start. We, we start by doing something like this. Or maybe something like this. What have we done? We've immediately opened ourselves up in terms of vulnerability to certain aggressive matchups. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Ah, uh, let's see here. So this certainly opens us up to some early aggression. Hey, hey. You know, I like this. I actually have found Chandra's Triumph to be an extremely potent card. Hey, come here. Come here, get into your box. No, don't, no, you're gonna knock my water over, honey. Yeah, I, I was thinking of doing something like this. This actually seems relatively sensible, right? See, missing Jen, I think that this is actually an interesting 
an interesting suggestion. Because Flame Sweep has never felt particularly incredible to me. And then if we, boop, like this. Something went wrong. Something went wrong. I accidentally removed something. Ah, that's what I accidentally removed. Um, okay. This feels very reasonable to me. So if we're against a, a pretty fast deck, these are the ones that we're looking to cut, right? And do I really want four shocks in the sideboard? Maybe something like this. Maybe something like this. We're going to change this to the Nox 9. <laughs> uh, Nox with a dash of day 9. Perfect. What's the purpose of the Ugin? He's just another big, scary card. Very good at just destroying a variety of the things that Red struggles with, such as... Uh, Enchantments you can take care of lots of large creatures that have various protections associated with them. Let's go ahead and export this. I think that this is going to function better in the current meta due to the fact that there is so much green. That's a bad one. That's a bad one. These are all bad. I don't like them. They hurt. They suck. They're awful. happens. Perfect. Uh, don't want any of these. Really, we're just going to go for the scrying. Yeah, it's the first time this has happened, uh, like this year, so, you know, not the biggest, biggest deal. <laughs> it's a feather deck, fuck. <laughs> Shit. Could my deck be feather? Might not actually have a tool to do it. I'll land all the time, please. I wonder how I get around this. Nice, it's land. Cool. Is unusually good against feather decks because 
Feather decks typically have one dude that they're trying to do stuff with. I obviously want this, right? Good. So, drawing a Star of Extinction is probably our only hope here. Probably our only hope, yep. That lethal is that death. It's pretty deathy, pretty deathy looking. It happens. It's all good. This is what I mean: is the shocks are just not especially good in that spot. I think the flame sweeps, things that deal two damage, do not seem especially good. We could arguably work in the shivan fires. So doesn't that, 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 that feels nice, right? It feels like a nice move that we just did here. Maybe instead of the shocks, we, we go for um, one more Shivan Fire, one Chandra's Triumph. That could be very nice. Because, like, do I even really want all these things that much anymore now? I mean, the only two toughness creature that our opponent has is that 2-2 two -two that starts buffing itself over time. I'll trust us, I cut the shivs and put in the fries. Wait, is fry... Am I confusing the colors? Fries white and blue. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely what we should have done. Absolutely. Yeah, sorry, I, I, I keep mixing up some of those uh, color hate cards. Yep, chew on the box, Despy. White or blue creatures. Yeah, that card is unbelievable in this situation. I just kind of... <laughs> I have a lot of video games in my head. It's very hard. It's playing too many video games. Huh. <sighs> at least we will be able to kill the turn two. Fuck. Fuck. The only real recourse I have against the Nodanto Vanguard is the, um... Thaumatic compass and the large creatures that I have. Oh, T's helping. <laughs> oh no. Alright, you know what? I'll just, let's just move on with life. Let's move on with life. <laughs> okay, alright. Woo! Alright, that was. You know what? That one just hurt badly in all ways. <laughs> we just we mulled a four and like kind of sort of stabilized we, we at least got hope before we died which is nice what a good looking hand so this would have been our shock this is how we're evaluating what we think of our star of extinction and flame sweeps in here What situation would you want draw first? I would by and large say don't even worry about that. Just go and play first. If you are a hyper advanced modern player, then you'll probably have times where you want to do that. I don't need to put a stop on either of these, but. All right, we see four colors. This could very well be four color Keithus. Now, I do think that it is the most important thing for us against the Keithus deck is to just be smashing. Alright. 
No shame in my game. So here is the combo that I've been eager to get up and running. Ah, I know what deck this is. I believe that this is the Golos deck because we see these four colors and then the Gateway Plaza is a very nice way to get red in here. Yep, there's the Field of the Dead. Perfect. I mean, pseudo-perfect, as perfect as perfect can be. So now two Zomboids are going to come down. But great, see, we're already main decking the Star of Extinction, which gives us a few more legs. We have more legs to work with as a leggy, leggy man. Love You love to see this. You love to see it. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Go get him, buddies. <laughs> Time to turn up the heat. So the way that we win this matchup is, frankly, just by beating our opponent down. If we can avoid a second Field of the Dead, we're, we're pretty good. Oh, wait, we have a Field of Ruin now. For some reason, I thought this was an interplanar beacon. Just sort of confusing the two in my head. So Flame Sweep's actually pretty nice here, too. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's just a little bit of a dumb, blunt mistake from your pal Sean, but that's I think it's okay. It. I'm going home. Screw you guys, I'm going home. Ooh. Really nice. Yeah, Flame Sweep and Star of Extinction gives us some more legs versus the relatively common red matchups. Um, yeah, it gives me some more legs, gives me answers to a, a little bit of comfort versus aggro. A lot of comfort against the green matchups. I think, I think this was a really nice suggestion. I think this was a really nice suggestion to sort of straddle that line. I think Missing Jen is the one who suggested this. I think it's just turning out really, really nicely. Not a problem. Okay. It's from Miss Spire. I got motion sickness. I got motion sickness. I had to stop. Which felt incredibly poopy. My heart. Yeah, I know. My stomach. the worst possible one to have gotten. Okay. This is x equals 10. Alright, well at least I can kill it. Don't need any more of these. 
Oh, I see. Well, it's 13. Ah, I see. Dude, having this in the main feels really nice. So this allows me to account for the fact that my opponent could play a large thing and then play an Excess of Fate. If two Field of the Deads come out, we almost have answers for everything. We almost have answers for everything right now. No chance Dan will play Outer Wilds again. Right now, I, I just I get too frightened. I don't know else to play it, to state it. Man, I'm good. It's unemployed Shaku who just gifted fives. Woo! Unemployed Shaku, what a pleasure. Oh my god, how how long hath it been unemployed, Thaku? Unemployed Shaku's been here for like 80 months? 84? Damn, I'm good. Damn, day nine. Oh, you're so sick, day nine. Thanks, man. It's a pleasure. Unemployed Shock says, I just felt like spreading love on my seven year anniversary. Well, that's very kind of you, Unemployed Shock. Thank you very much. Maldarian also gifted five, and Maldarian has amazingly been around even longer at 89 months. And of course, as you well know, 89 is a code, sexually speaking for getting it on with a snowman. Um, Golos is now, as long as Golos doesn't hit the uh, extra turn, I think that we're gonna pretty much be okay. All right, yep, there's the, the Nexus of Fate, so. We want the blood sums, we want the star of extinctions. Now the question for me is like what do I what do I actually like not want? <laughs> Gregor McTwist gifts five and says sub gift train. My god, you're all you're all so sweet on this fine Friday. What a fine Friday to be around beautiful people. I think I'm going to cut this Chandra Novice Pyromancer. Because I think, I think my goal is to win in the long game. Slowly and gradually. Same thing with the Cavalier of, Fame, of Flame. I think the Lava Coils and the Chandra's Triumphs seem to make sense to me. Am I FOS? Oh my god, what's happening? What's happening? Ah! It's actually happening. Okay, so while <laughs> upon Gregor McTwist saying sub train. What what happened? Look at this. Gregor McTwist gifted fives, and then Super Fluxus gifted fives to Rafa Bean, Fa Can, Joe the Magician, Shared Fate, Flavo Parmelia, JD Square gifted five, Bab Waiter gifted five, and now and now it's continuing to rub off. Kronos eight fifteen gifted five. 
Guys, let me just give you some high fives for them fives. Wake up, Norman just gifted five. These are these are new names in the lifespan of sub giftitude. Stacko eighty four gifted five. Oh my God, Ang eighty <laughs> gifted five. Kusabi gifted five. Shine Star gifted five. Ah, holy shit! That's th that is like way far and away the most like consecutive in a rows that has ever happened here. Holy crap! Wow. Dapper Dan 3 says thanks for the gift sub to Shine Star. Ven Faith is gifting five. Ah! 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 And, and Wake Up Norman says, I gifted you subs aeons ago. <laughs> Meister Clickington gifted five subs. Mr. Prodigious gifted five subs. I have we I don't think we've ever had a sub train of this nature before. Oh my god, well, Dale, thank you all so much. What, once again, none of you ever have to do that. None of you ever are required or pressured by any means. Just simply showing up and hanging out is more than enough. That said, it is extraordinarily kind of all of you. I think that's... Uh, okay, Paint Can is coming in with five. Paint Can 17. High fives for Paint Can. On Darren gifted fives. My God, on Darren Paint Can. Now, now some of the regulars coming back in. Just let me burn. Go get him, buddy. This is so sick, solid, and tight. Now, an interesting question is: Should I be using my treasure maps to try to work towards? Hmm. I think I actually do want to do this and keep hunting instead of. Yeah, that'll do. Go get him, buddy. Oh my god. Looking away, looking back, and there's just more rolling in. That must have been like 60 or 70 total gifted. Sub -roos. Thanks, everyone. Oh. Flem says get all those gift boxes in here. Well, I'm sitting with the golden box of 500. 500 gifted subs. Kronos815 says, Dan, I wish I could honestly give you more. Haha, -ha. you've just given me so much joy. Well, thank you. It's like very sweet of you to say. Kusabi says, You are worth it. Oh, it's like very. Oh, woo! AZ Quelt, five gifties. Prospero Ice Shadow, 1985. Azathoth, 85. Zamobi. Vimzo, three. Phil Moody. What the heck? Give me land or give me death. Study, focus. I just want to burn stuff already. Phil Moody is a name that's new to the sub giftitude. As is AZ Quelt. Thanks, Phil Moody, for the five. <laughs> Vakarask has gifted five. This is. Unemployed Shaku says, This is just fantastic. Look at what you started, Unemployed Shaku. A flood of generosity. This, this, I mean, for me, this has just been wonderful. I have been basically just kind of feeling a little sick. Starting to come back. Starting to regain my senses. I'm telling the abbots. Dornamel with the five. Oh my god. Yeah, there it is. Ah, nice. So I think, I think, I thonk. I'm gonna do like this. Depending upon what happens here. I mean, this obviously looks like a trap from Stoic Rico. This obviously looks like a trap. Jules with five gifties. Dornamel and Jules. Oh my God, like we're, we're, we have to have broached. A hundred. Superfluxus says we're gonna run out of viewers to gift them to. Yeah. 
You're all in dangerous territory. You hate to say goodbye to your treasures, but it seems good. The Aether 97 says, love your content. I've been watching you for a long time, but mostly from YouTube these days. Glad I could catch your stream. Oh, I'm thrilled to have you here, the Aether 97. It's always good to see people in real life. Well, I should say, in, in the one to one contextitude. Toot toot! Tyrus 568 said, what did I just walk into? Just enormous piles of gifting. Thick, swollen, tight piles of gifts. Oh, how I wish I'd played a Blood Sun. I think I actually should have played the Blood Sun and just waited a turn. I think that this guy is actually such a significant threat that if it's not on the field, I need to be ultra careful about it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, this is this is kind of what we're forced to do. I am not going to attack because we, we have to live through probably some turns, like several turns. Deathmask Divine says, "Why well, I turn on the stream to continue my education. Empty Gene, an absolute legend, gives me a sub. This community rules. I This has been such an incredible stream of generosity like this is i mean y'all are always very generous and supportive don't get me wrong but this is this is a one at a time one once in a while friday a once in quite some time friday all right we we, we have pretty much crunched the opposition here So we're just going to minimize damage. Entropy says, you're a stream of generosity. No, you're breathtaking. <laughs> so, oh, I didn't hit this button before the end of the turn. Fuck. Oh, my God. That fucks us. Oh, my God. I didn't I didn't pay attention, and I accidentally the whole game. Shit. Fark. How do I do this? All right, change of plans. Never see a volcano erupt in person? You're about to. I needed to cycle to get lands. That way I could minus X and clear the board. Whoopsie, dang doopsie. This is why MTG is so hard. <laughs> Frank Sinatra just gifted five subs. Well, thank you, Frank. For any of you who don't know, Frank is... Frank is somewhat new here. Is it's now gifted me, 10. Or is it getting a little warm in here? All right, so I'm going to have to start digging a bit deeper. See, imagine if I had just cleared this whole board. Oh, would have been a thing of beauty. <laughs> Belinar subbed and says, just gifting myself a sub. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Okay, so this is lethal, right? Because I shoot this, and then I play this, and the Chandra Regulator doubles it up for me, right? So I shoot this. I play this, the Chandra's Regulator doubles it up for me, right? Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Nice, nice, nice! Shake your generosity. Thank you all so much. That is just so kind. 
I'm actually curious what the number is. I think it's like 110. Yeah, looks like 100-ish. One stone of ice says, I think we might want flame sweep over lava coil, but I might be wrong. You might be right on that, actually, because it gives us an insurance policy if we're low on, or slow getting to our blood sun. The lava coil is not good against Golos. Um, and, you know, we'd rather have the flame sweep if we were... Yeah, I think that's a really astute observation. I like that. I like that play a lot. It hits the um, the one one guy. Well, maybe maybe we might want to say that the risen reef is better if we just pick it off in a more direct fashion. Phil Moody gifted another five for ten. Holy crap! I'm gonna go ahead and get the land getter down. I was just watching the Tasteless podcast and I was talking about it. I wanted to give him a big hug. I was almost crying when the subtrain took all the bad feels to the next stop. Yeah, I'm happy to hear that. I have a little sympathy for my stressful time. Griffin says, Dana and I have stayed loyal to your channel, even when I've been way down. I love just hanging out in here. This is, it, there's just so, this is just a giant... It's just a clot of pleasantness. <laughs> ah, I love mixing words with different sort of insinuations to them. <laughs> I'm thinking about that word a lot. Uh, Alright. Stop having fun. Think about that word a lot because it is in the opening page of uh, The Watchman. Not The Watchman, just Watchman. opening page images all right is there a way for your pal Sean to eliminate this little pickle from our picture I think we probably want to get this Chandra's regulator down do I want another land? I think that Chandra's Regulator and Blood Sun seems pretty good to me. Actually, probably like this. It's just, it's just not stopping. It's just not stopping. Gregor McTwist gifted five again. Mr. Prodigious says, This community's been such a beacon of positivity for years. Come here and quietly hang out with all you amazing people. It's helped me through so many dark times. This is actually, this is, I'm pretty sure, the greatest chat on all of Twitch. I mean, I, I, I go <laughs> tune into other people's channels sometime, and I look at their chat, and it, it just looks like a torture chamber starring the person who's streaming. JD Square with the five gifties. Ice Shadow 1985 spams a bunch of that sweet, sweet Despy emote. Day per. So the real way in which we wish to clear this out is one. Great. We could do this by. Let's see here. How the heck do I wish to do this? 
The thaumatic compasses are going to help a lot to slow this game down. We have to be very concerned about our Chandra being eaten. I'm going to do like this. Oh shit, this actually doesn't do anything. I'm, I'm a dummy. Okay, so I, I, I see how we want to do this. My blood sons turn off the thematic compass. Duh. Surprise. I guess this means that there's another instance of a hydroid crisis, huh? Okay. That, that, that's uh, one of the weaker Nexus of Fates here. I think I think I really do want... I mean, I could have kept the Chandra's Regulator. Or excuse me, played the Chandra's Regulator. Maybe that would have been better. Mm -hmm. Really? I mean, are, we just, are we just dying to a Nexus of Fate? Loop? Maybe, maybe yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, when you get that many uh, Nexus of Fates out, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Let's see something here. Uh, yeah, the overlay's not working because uh, Magic the Gathering Arena updated. I actually think I do want a second Star of Extinction in the sideboard. I think, I think. This feels pretty reasonable. Star of Extinction just feels disgusting in this meta. And I think I did need to cut the um, Thaumatic Compass if I'm putting in the Blood Suns. I think I should just make that a, a normal normal decision. Missing Jensen. I don't know the plural of Nexus. Is it Nexi or Nexuses? Um, I think the actual official statement on that is that though it is historically correct that it is Nexi, um, all right, we're in very good shape if this is what's coming now. Um, given that it is Nexi, uh, people have been using Nexuses for sufficiently long that that's actually fine too. There's a lot of um, stuff in the English language that kind of functions like that, where technically it's one thing, but people have used it so much another way that that's okay too now. So we're against a green deck that has the Ley Line of Abundance, which is a fantastic and interesting card. So we're going to try to use our treasure maps and some of our little sneaky lands to buy us a wee bit of time. Oh, Finale of Devastation. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. So glad I put that stop there. I don't want this to eventually destroy my thematic compass. Or my treasure map. Order 21 says, what would you do if you couldn't do the activity that you define yourself by slash with anymore? For some reason, i.e. injury. 
Um, I've actually had a few times in my life where I felt like I've had to grapple with the idea of who am I? What What is my identity? Um, all right, well, this is, I mean, we're essentially in Star of Extinction or Bust, but that's why we run a pair in there. Gonna have to say goodbye to her. All right, so we, we died. That's all good. I just put extra Star of Extinctions in this board, though. Okay. So let's see if we can sideboard this out properly. This Chandra is super weak in this matchup. I think so is the Flame Sweep. I think that's pretty weak here. Um, I think that we do want... We do want the Star of Extinctions. We do want our trio of Shivan Fires and our Lava Coil to just burn through all those obnoxious buttheads. Cavalier, I think is just, it's not quite the right configuration against this deck. I like these repeated blockers and that sort of thing. I actually think I cut a, a large Chandra. She is so strong as a finisher and so flexible to be able to exile some stuff. But I still am more interested to, like, recur this Chandra to get these other things and work our way towards the Star of Extinctions. Stone with 4 4 four says, Man, I wish I didn't get tilted upon not drawing the right tech card that I just added in more of. <laughs> I, I find that the, the biggest way to deal with tilt is mental preparation. And I don't mean, like, the sort of vague preparation of, like, I'm just going to try not to get mad after this. But, like, let's assume you do lose. What are you going to say? What are you going to say? What are you going to do? Right, this is... This is owning. Oh, yeah. I'm going to keep the option to Chandra's Triumph or bump the Blast Zone. So this indicates that Grim Hortons did not have a turn 4 play. So if I blow this up, my opponent will probably also not have a turn 4 play but I'll also lose a land. I still think this is better to do. I'm gonna do this right now. These both cost two, so they go. Pretty clearly this. Pretty clearly, I think. Okay, so we can start picking lands off. We can Chandra's Triumph this as well. We just 100% do this. Because there's almost no cards that... Oh, wait, no. Rabid Bite. Rabid Bite would allow... Grim Hortons to kill this off, but I, I'd still be surprised to see that a wee bit. Do not underestimate my fortitude. I can help you no longer. So again, my opponent d seems to be low on plays in general. So... Yeah, Mortar. Mortar was asking about what I would do. Yeah, no, there's been a couple times in my life where I've had to sort of deal with that idea of, like, what is my identity? What does it mean to be Sean Day 9 plot and so on? All right. All right. All right, let's thin our deck out. Let's thin it out. Well, 
What? Oh shit, did I just get Finale of Devastation? I maybe did. Oh my god, sick. Oh my god, fuck yeah. What did I lose to? Show me. <laughs> you got it, man. Oh, that's fucking so awesome. <laughs> Absolutely myrtle. Yeah, I have several times had to face that sort of like, here's my identity. Like, what does it mean? Oh my god. And I, I feel like that's what it means to find your center as a person. I have to understand that I am not any one activity. I am not any one thing. I need to be able to find my comfort and my center outside of things that I don't have con as much control over. So for instance, I like talking and explaining things, which is very different from I like streaming. Like I like streaming, don't get me wrong, I like streaming, but in terms of my identity, my ident identity is not that I am a streamer. My identity is that I like explaining things. I like working on little problems, little puzzles. I don't have control over whether I'll be able to stream forever and for always. Here is a circumstance in which we have the flame sweep. Now, what, what should I do? I think I'm not actually going to do anything, because there's nothing on turn four that actually frightens me, really. Everything from deer to dinosaurs. Well, it stinks a little bit, but... That hath landed, but uh, once again, this is part of the reason why I'm running Starve Extinction. I told you there's a lot of things there. see what happens by the end of the turn, because this is definitely getting buffed up. Oops, oops, what am I doing? Wait, what? What am I doing? Undo, undo everything. Undo everything. Resolve this. Sorry. Wait until end of turn. Mortar 21 says, was asking because I've been doing sports my whole life. My physique is really important to me, but I got a herniated disc and can't even walk right now. Everyone knew me as the sports guy, and sport was literally how I kind of found myself and defined myself by. Oh, shit. I skipped through the turn. Well, whatever. It's fine. Shit happens. Um, don't know what to do right now. I, I think it's important to just start slowly acknowledging it, thinking about what are the aspects of athleticism and sports that you really, really liked, seeking out things that maybe can tap into a similar feeling, tap into things that maybe have nothing to do with it to start finding joy elsewhere. Because the truth is that sports are one thing. I think I have to play this just a chump. Sports are just one thing that you could conceivably do to bring you joy in some way, to bring you pleasure and experience and all this sort of thing. I'm going to pay it and shoot this twice. Well, you're annoying. And I think it just takes some time. We're still getting close. Still getting close. 
I think it just does take some time to begin hunting through survive. other things, exploring. Exploring other things to start to find what are the emotional aspects that give you joy. So for instance, um, things that give me joy I have found from from the emotional regard. Alright, I did it. I'm the best soccer player. From the emotional side of things, I really like obnoxious fiddly problems. They wake my brain up. They make me feel excited. They bring me great joy. I love obnoxious fiddly problems. And by fiddly, I, you know, this is just a word that I'm using, that I, I use to make sense of things. I did it. These, these are my words, uh, but these sorts of things just like totally, oh my God, I freaking love like a million. I love just hanging out and being stuck and figuring out how the heck my machine learning thing works. You know, why, why is this problem not functioning properly, damn it? Like, what the hell is going on? Arr, like, trying to figure that. I love that feeling. I loved it in the exact same way that I loved in StarCraft. Being like, and how the hell does this build order work? What the hell's going on? How do I how do I beat XYZ thing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm coming for you next. This card's turning out to be pretty sick. I'd get out of the way if I were you. <laughs> no, no, I'm not getting out of nobody's way. And so, you know. So we're gonna get sufficiently trampled. So this flame suit doesn't matter. Perfect. Do I hold on to this? I think I do. Um, you know, so, you know, StarCraft really used to be unbelievably central to my identity as a person. Look, I am a StarCraft player. And there were many times in high school, college, grad school, post daily many times where I couldn't play I don't have the opportunity to play and it felt really bad it felt like I was Stomping losing time. myself man and I had to start to understand like what what is the joy that this thing is bringing me man what what even is so this is death unless I literally draw a miracle thing here I don't know what that miracle thing would be, but I need to draw it right now. Tight. This doesn't seem as useful. This seems strictly useless. I think the Shivan Fires and Lava Coils are coming in again. I think this goes and this goes. This comes in. Great. This specific kind of deck might be our Achilles heel. I think that we're a lot better against the rest of the meta. But yeah, when I started to find, like, no, 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 Sean, it's, it's less that you are a StarCraft player. Like, certainly that is part of my identity, and I, I sort of have a comfortable relationship with it now. I, it used to be, unless I was playing or doing StarCraft stuff, I felt like part of me was missing. When I was doing it, I felt whole. And when I was not doing it, I felt like it was missing. When I was doing it, I felt whole, you know, etc. And that's that's somewhat of an unhealthy relationship. Uh, probably not the Field of Ruin against a Mono Green deck, huh? That's, that's a little bit of a... an unhealthy relationship that you have to be doing something always. But now I, I sort of feel like I can think about the aspects that I like about StarCraft quite fondly. I 
And even if I'm not playing, I feel actually okay. And I'm starting to understand more, like, what is it at the heart of that game that actually makes me feel excited? I love working on difficult problems. I love doing it. I don't mean difficult for the world. I mean difficult for me. I love when my brain just gets obsessed with something. Oh, it feels so good. I love that shit now. We're doing it. Remember this one? Whew. She need to keep peeling some lands. Super Fluxus gifted five subs and says my parting gift. Well, hey, thanks, Super Fluxus. Hope you have a great night. Looking forward to seeing you around in this here little community of knights. Hey, you guys are great. Our opponent appears to be stuck on land. No. Once again, my opponent appears to not have a lot of good... Well, appears to have no two mana place. Appears to be light on three and four mana place. Considering that it went uh, Paradise Druid into Steel Leaf Champion. That's a very awkward run out. This implies to me there's a lot of five costers in here. Land would be spectacular here. Would just be unbelievable. Would win us the game. Would win us the game. I'd like to state once again that this would win us the game. Of course. Of course that's what happened. Of course. I know. It's okay, we like a little tension in life. We like a little tension in life. Doesn't seem to be a lot of good place. Karashi appears to be stuck, needs that fourth land. And another Vine Mare. Oh my god, we lost. I've survived an apocalypse. I will survive you. We're dead. Vine Mare is an elemental, it is. But we'd be able to clear off this, and we'd be able to clear off the 1-1. One, one. And then my Chandra would be a target, and would get picked at. And that would give us enough time to give us two more turns to get what we need. Like this. This will be fun to watch. All right, I'm gonna take a bunch of pain. All right, so this is at 12. All right, so what I must do is I must play this, which will heal me back to 13. And then I absolutely must, well, if I destroy this. No! It's fine, it's fine. That's actually better than the minus three that I was intending on doing. This is a better play. The ties that bind us all. It generally makes this easier to do. All right, guys, one time. All right, let's put this. Let's put this ping here for the sweats. <laughs> Stop. I'm ready to go to one man. All right. And burned here. <sighs> <All right. laughs> Fuck. Harder though, my God. Fuck. I almost, I almost wonder about like getting a fourth treasure map in here since it's just like. 
Maybe that's just stupid. Uh, that actually looks a little nonsensical. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll admit, I, I get absolutely owned by green. It's just the way it is. You know, it's the way it is. You know, other aspects of identity, you know, like, uh, I would say, like, deep down there were insecurities, you know, when I was much younger. Insecurities about being accepted and fitting in. I sort of developed a performative aspect. Because, I mean, like, bluntly, I didn't really get how friendship worked. Even in, in my 20s, I didn't really get how to just, like, hang out and be friends with someone. Like, I, I really didn't get it, because I, I spent such a disproportionate amount of my time, like, alone. And when I was under stress, I would just be alone. And sort of decompress in that way. I didn't really know how to... I only want this out just so I can keep finding the land I need. Yeah, I, I didn't really know how or what that meant. Like, how much am I supposed to hang around someone? Like, I, I felt, of course, the craving and the wish and the need to be liked. And to get that sort of social approval. But I, I, I didn't really know then what, I, what I'm supposed to do. Do I... You know... Do a little dance... Am I supposed to call them some number of times a week? Like, if we want to hang out, what is appropriate and what isn't? So, you know, I sort, of, I sort of developed a very odd behavior where, you know, again, I'm very performative, good at telling stories, telling jokes, but that's still not really getting necessarily some type of emotional connection. People would go like, oh, Sean, yeah, he's so funny, blah, blah. Is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. I don't know, man. Let's try this. I did it. I killed the field. Give me my mountain. And so, yeah, I mean, like, I genuinely, uh, you know, as I got older, I had to figure out that, like, yeah, no, if I am able to be performative to make people laugh, to make them go, oh, that was fun to have Sean there. Sure, I was doing the external thing, but I still wasn't getting that internal, like, feeling of connection and closeness and friendship. And I sort of had to learn how to navigate that. Nice. Now I can nuke both of them. So I had to figure out how each of those worked. What I sort of mean by, like, the identity searching is, like, okay, well, I used to think of myself as a very, like, entertainery sort of person, and if I wasn't able to be funny or able to be on all the time, to, well, then I lose that thing that feels like really, really important to me, man. And as I got older, and I just started to learn more about what it meant to, like, have a center to um, be able to do those kinds of things, I just felt a great sense of additional nope. comfort. Don't like that. I know my responsibility. I've got it. Well, shit. We're, sti we're still okay. We're still okay. Sorry, I thought there was eight. Sparks 
to fly. So I just wanted to do it twice for awesomeness sake. So now our opponent could have scape shift. Can't scape shift right now. Post killing of this, our opponent will have. Really should have seen that coming. Actually, if I did one, two, three and got that, that would be one, two, four, six. No, 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 that wouldn't quite be enough. Okay. Yeah, so my opponent has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven land. They're only going to be able to get seven. I don't know why I'm doing this right now, but I happen to be doing it right now. So what what are you going to do? I, I could have done that earlier on my turn and then played another mountain. That would have actually helped me. It's looking like we're going to win. Man, this, this, this flame sweep and... Star of Extinction combo is like really nice. But anyways, Mortar 21, you're going to be just fine. And I deeply understand that feeling of like, this is my identity, this is who I am. I am sports. I am my physicality. Ba -da -da -ba -da -da -ba -da -da. Only seven, so that's good. Crazy boy, eh? Well, shit, that actually kills us. If I had... Ah! Damn it. Uh, is there a way to block this thing? Uh, crap. Crap, 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 crap. You know, it all came down to not doing that Chandra's Regulator. Because I think if I, like, do this... And I discard this guy. And if this is like a land, yeah, then I would have been able to kill everything this turn. Uh, that is no big deal. This is all fine. So we definitely don't need this flame sweep. Or a lot of these lava coils, I don't think. Maybe we, we, we might claim we don't even need the... Thaumatic compasses if we're going to be digging super hard. This seems pretty pretty solid actually. One flame sweep just in case. What do we think about the fries? Yeah, you know what? We basically need the Star of Extinctions to, as the way to constantly eliminate the giganto threats of the Crazy Pals. I'm actually going to use a restroom real fast. Give me a Excellent. All right, we're gonna we're gonna make it work. I don't know if I'm actually just FOS, but I feel like treasure maps are really good in this deck. You know what I mean? Did someone just host me? Why are we over three thousand viewers? Abruptly. 
What up, TPO3? TPO says, is there, is there not a donation button, or am I just blind? There is no donation button. You are indeed not blind. If you want to do some gifting of subs, that's generally the best way to go about doing it. I am going to try to work in an additional treasure map. So I hope that whole burble was helpful, Mortar 21. Sorry I'm late. Goodbye. This is one of these reasons why I actually quite like Baby Chandra is very good at dealing with this bastard. <clears throat> Chandra, need more control. Now, if we no draw out of the blue we will meet another teenager Chandra, we can start bonking for six a turn, which is awesome. Popcorn XXX. Or popcorn X underscore X. Dana, I started playing Magic this year with War of the Spark, doing some pre-releases and two out of Giants. What can I do with all my cards? Or how do I get to play more Magic? I tried some draft in Arena and went 0 and 3. You know, I might recommend just doing. <clears throat> Boy, I sure know how to call it. I might recommend just doing some. Um, I think I'm a decent enough Go get him, buddies. Just doing some of the free-to-play stuff. Just like, you know, playing with the included decks, unlocking some cards online, playing more in that vein. Alright, nice, nice, tight, dope. And just getting some experience and then revisiting drafting. Or watch some videos about drafting. Drafting is actually pretty, pretty challenging in a number of ways. Chandra's regulator would be pretty nice here. So I, I kind of feel like I need to get this. I kind of need to get this down. You know, and I want to see what's coming up next before I use this. Treasure map is to totally super not helpful. I mean, if we hit Chandra's regulator, we, we just had lethal. Because we could swing in for... Or not lethal, but... They would have to chump block one. Just gonna bonk one. This seems okay to me. Holy crap, what just happened? Ah! We had gifties! Rift Killer gifted 10 subs and Gregor McTwist gifted 10. Hot diggity damn. Gregor McTwist says I got inspired by Rift Killer. Gifted what? 20? 25 today? Technically could have done this before. TPO3 be also gifted. No way! How? How? Sorry, my chat keeps scrolling around. They changed the way that chat scrolling works. Oh yeah, you gifted a sub to I smurfed your mom. <laughs> and two more to misspelled nine and Tistan Pol. Is this it, Dinner Spork? Is this it? You done? Probably circuitous route coming down. I can see your soul. <laughs> Yeah, if you're looking for more ways to play, I really recommend doing a lot of the free-to-play stuff on Magic. Um, also, just building some decks and inviting a friend over and saying, Hey, here's a deck and I have a deck. Let's let's just play some, dude. J 
JTS is me. Of cheesecake and crumbles fame. Perfect. This can't get returned to hand with uh, Teferi. That can't. That cannot get returned to hand. How do I want to do this? This is this is a good day. It is a good day to scry. Put that there. Yeah, I really feel like four treasure maps and a single um, thumbatic compass is, feels pretty nice. You got it, man. I love how resilient this deck is to Agent of Treachery. It feels really nice. Uh, I, yeah, I also recommend uh, just going to a Friday Night Magic and going up to someone going, Hey, do you have any decks I could play with? I keep getting owned. Can, can like, we play a game together and, like, you just give me one of your decks and I play against you? One day, I'll come back even stronger. Talk about a magic nerd's wet dream. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I do want this, because I'm not going to be doing anything else with my turn, and I don't want to spend any of my treasures. I am not happy right now. Commander is a format I'd really recommend, like a bazillion. I'd recommend it times one million. <laughs> I backed off from a billion to a million, but you know me, I'm a conservative person. Hello, my crazy friend. X equals six, damn. Well, at least our overarching... Oh, that's nine. Wow. I'm having a hard time reading these little thingies. Oh my god, I'm a fucking idiot. I fucked myself. I have not planned this deck out correctly at all, dude. I'm so embarrassed. Holy shit. I'm I am a moron. I did not set this up correctly at all. Holy shit. Alpine Moon is the card you want? Alpine Moon is not the card I want. Alpine Moon is not the card I want. I like Blood Sun. See? I just completely forgot about that. Which is an important thing to be forgetting about. That was also the incorrect one to kill off, but that's fine. See, the reason I like Blood Sun over Alpine Moon is Alpine Moons get fucking owned by Blast Zones. This Sacrifice Treasure Draw card gets turned off by this. This is what we're talking about right now. I just forgot this interaction in this circumstance, which sucks. Yeah. I just needed to set up my board state better. I think we're on to something though. I think we're on to something. Let's 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 adjust things a wee bit. I 
I do think. Actually, I'm just going to do like this and like this. I, did, I never felt like the double thumbatic compass was as helpful. I actually think Cavalier of Flame is increasingly high value in what we're doing. Can't run Bloodstone with that many extra text lands? Yeah, you can. Oh, yeah. Uh, you absolutely can. Super duper, yes, you can. Does it turn off some of their potency? Yeah, of course. Of course it does. But that doesn't mean you can't run it. That doesn't mean you can't run it. It's it's so unbelievably strong versus the Field of the Dead decks. And the important thing is to have a plan around that. Um, and the error that happened that game is that it didn't work. Uh, we've lost the two matchups against the Field of, of the Dead decks today, but um, earlier this week we were just absolutely whomping upon them. And what it requires is just in intelligent planning, which I've been a little lacking on. Andresma13 says, well, I was gifted a sub. Yeah, there's actually just been so many subs gifted that ev everyone should just take a quick check and make sure that they <laughs> didn't get gifted while they weren't looking. Mm -hmm. Ashilika with the 67 months. Mwah to you, Ashilika. God, I love so much how strong Chandra is on an empty board. I wonder if there's an argument to be made to, on an empty board, plussing Chandra instead of zeroing Chandra. Hmm, 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 hmm. Good. Good. Joey Meister says GG subtest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Aquamariner. Aquamariner continues the train. Aquamariner, who's been here for nearly, nearly eight, zero on the month arenas, has gifted five. I don't know what I'm doing here, but it's gonna be fun. Go get him, buddies. Gosh, look at all. God, that feels players. good. Stacko eighty four continuing our daily sub trainage. Swerving us violently upward, Stacko eighty four with another five gifties. This is this has just been a staggering amount of gifting today. Thanks so much, everyone. And as always, I I'm always much more interested in people gifting subs to each other here than um, about directly donating to me, which is why I don't have a donation button. And uh, I would say I've never had a donation button, but I, I had I had a link to it for like on PayPal for like 2010 to 2012, but I kind of hit it. Perfect. Oh my god, the Dradog. Gifted five subs. I gotta give a shout out to Dradog, who's uh, helped so much with some of the cool-ass, fun-ass machine learning stuffs that Eric and I have been jamming on. It's for dog uh, works with AWS. I don't remember your official title, but I believe that you are the lead head of directorship at AWS, something like that. Oh, I gotta do this. What we really want to see is Chandra's regulator. Head of social media marketing for AWS. That's what it is. That's what it is. Spent a long time getting real interested and into machine learning. Over the last, uh, what? What's happening here, man? Oh, 
How did the cow milking simulation end up? Well, first of all, I want to give a shout out to uh, Dradog for helping us with some of our setup with AWS. We've done a ridiculous amount of tests on AWS. And I think it cost us like $112 or something like that. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to message Eric. I want to find out how much it was. Howdy. Oh shit, I didn't scry, but that's fine. Chandra's regulator would have been amazing here. How much did we spend doing AWS tests for the cows? But yeah, no, I, uh, I'm i real interested in machine learning thingies. And I think, the, the, I'd say the number one takeaway from all of the work that I've done with machine learning is the really important part. Oh, the really, really super important part of all things machine learning is setting up the problem. It's just about setting up the problem. It's not about the algorithm in between. It's not about how many nodes of this, that, and the other you have. Send this back. That's totally fine. All right, you fucked up. It's also totally fine. Well, actually, what what do I do about this, huh? That may have killed us. Fuck. Shit. You had to scry to play Charmander this turn? No, I didn't. See? Minus one. Add two. Hell, I can even scry right now and still do it. It's totally fine. Do I have any direct damage in here? We're worried about end of turn scape shift. This is the play that I see. Well, this is, there's a reason that we run Blood Suns in the sideboard. I, know who I, am. And no one is telling I can set my opponent to frickin' one. Ugh. Everyone knows the bigger explosions are more fun. Say hi to my fiery friends. Oh my god, I won! Woo! Yeah. Raw. Something like this. This is this is the rough plan that we're going for. We're basically asserting that we want to get to 
we want to be both pressuring and trying to we're thinking of not winning in the ultra long run we're not trying to go over we're trying to control the growth with the blood suns but we're still trying to go under i think that's the switch in mindset that we're doing griffin says how the kitty's doing sean well despy's in the bungalow hi despy yep yep all right despy is confirmed there uh sheriff is probably on the heating pad looking at birds Ross wants us taking flame sweep out against the 2 2 deck. Seems counterintuitive. Can you explain the cut? We run Blood Sun, so our opponent isn't going to be making 2 2s. And for insurance, we run um, Star of Extinctions. It both destroys the land and large Hydro Crises and the Teferis. But primarily, it's about Blood Sun. And this, is, this is a sideboarding technique that I, I feel like. Still a very good hand. This is a sideboarding technique that um, uh, I've only recently started to learn about, which is the idea that um, you have general things in your sideboard, like Flame Sweep. This is a very general card. This is the kind of card that can deal with aggro. It's, it's pretty good against zombies, against green decks. It's kind of like good against sweepers. Um, it's me, Elvish friend. It's kind of good against sweepers. What the fuck? Not sweepers. Rampers. Kind of good against rampers. It's a sweeper. It's good against rampers. They already said it correctly. So it's a very generalized answer. But. I'm happy as a hellion to start some fires. Go get him, buddy. We're not necessarily looking. We're not necessarily looking for the generalized answer post sideboard. We are interested in boarding in much more specific answers. That's our interest. J. Tam says, wouldn't you want that in your main deck that's generalized? That's exactly what we're talking about, right? In my main deck is this generalized, good against a lot of things kind of answer. And then in the sideboard, we remove this generalized flame sweep to put in the more specific hurtful card, which is Blood Sun. So that's why we're taking that out and putting the other thing in. Um, and, and this is a sort of interesting and new idea for me. The idea that I would have a card flame sweep that's good against Field of the Dead decks, but Blood Sun is great against Field of the Dead decks. Please let me click. Thank you very much. I'm pretty much playing my stuff out correctly. Gains us two. Doom, doom. I think I'm a decent enough pyromancer. Study, focus. I just want to burn stuff already. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna try something new. Okay, so I mean, we expect to be losing a lot of our board here, but that's pretty fine. Camling Phoenix helps just tons and tons and tons. Even if there's like an agent of treachery, we're still in pretty good shape. But it's a really interesting idea with the sideboarding, where you where you put in in the main deck a solid card, but then you have like super specific amazing cards, and you replace the good cards with the amazing cards. For instance, Oath of Kaya. Deals three damage. Heals you three. It's good. It's very generally good. It can, like, deal with a lot of land type stuff. Okay, so this is for one here. This is for two here. This is for six here. So if I... No blocks. I'm not comfortable. Throw another punch, and Sorry. you're gonna get burned. Oh, wait. I only have six. What the fuck am I doing? Oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. If I blocked this and that, then the other one would have been at one. 
Sorry, my brain my brain broke for a second because I was explaining a concept that was very interesting and meaningful to me. And then I make you to mistake you. Right, well, this is this is this could have been great. This could have been an amazing time in my life. is a bit painful. I set myself up to be able to keep this lady alive, didn't I? Or was she at four? Maybe she was actually at four. I just, for some reason, miscounted my land as I was pontificating about stuff. We're in a little bit of a hopeful spot here. <laughs> I should drink a ton more water. I think I'm also a little dehydrated. I think I've noticed that whenever I, I feel a little brain, a wee bit brain foggy, I can just consume just hordes of... You got me. Hordes of water. Yeah, client's starting to choke out. We're going to need to restart it in a sec. Whoosh wash, whoosh wash, whoosh wash. Okay. Now all we gotta do, it's simple. We just draw one lamp. It's no big deal. So the client's lagging out, but we can't do anything about that. Can't do anything about that. If we tried to disconnect and reconnect, we saw yesterday that the connection thing was broken. But yeah, no, I think I'm a little, a little dehydrated. Because I always I feel a little foggy in the brain. And I'm like, oh man, this really sucks. Oh, I want to be able to focus, blah, blah. And then I, uh, if I drink caffeine, I still feel weird. And if I drink water, that's what I'm talking about, man. I love being hydrated. I'm so obsessed with it that I'm part of that subreddit of those people that like to drink water. Whose name escapes me. All right, I'm going to go hydrate everyone. Really? I like playing from behind, it's fine. Really? Really was I that slow? You know, the reason I was slow is that I decided to get a second large mug of water. And also in that large mug of water, include for myself some ice cubes. 
Yeah, you don't go second against me, Karamea. I go second. Yeah, we might be a little boned. It's fine. We're, we're, we're plat four, no pips. We were playing expert control and winning. And we're climbing up ranks, and... We're now at the point where you can't lose any stars, so it's, like, totally fine if we just, like, biff the shit out of this. <laughs> Sounds like you need a water bottle. Well, I mean, I have large glasses. The problem is not the type of container so much as it is my uh, lack of fluid to fill said container. That's the heart of the issue. My turn, my turn, my turn. Talking about my turn. Fuck, 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 fuck. My turn. My turn. <sighs> Sounds like you need to run a hose from your tap to your streaming setup. Now we're thinking with portals, X Zolos. Can't tell if that's bad for us or good for us. I mean, in a way, it's bad for us. Wait, we're we're actually dead. I'm like my 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 focus is not is not here right now, and I think that I'm feeling. I think I'm feeling a wee bit some of the issues with having this many star of extinctions in the or in the in the side. I think that Knox was actually correct with the pair of star of extinctions. Uh, What, what do we put in this sidebar? Actually. Where's the... We should have a smelt. Demolish. Ooh, that's kind of funny. Either way, what do we, I, I think that the three star of extinctions is incorrect, and I think that something that was alluded to before, which is maybe we just keep some insurance flame sweeps in there. They seem pretty. They seem pretty good. Hey, what, what do we, you know, what's, guys, help me out here. What's the final card in the sidebar? What is it, you know? <sighs> Rampaging Ferocidon. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually fucking hilarious. Uh, hmm. 
Corsodon doesn't feel like it would be particularly good against or with this deck. I might just put in another Ugin. Like, we have these treasure maps in here now. Uh, th this is a little bit me not being entirely sure. Let's close it. Let's let's close it and reopen it, huh? All right. So let's see here. Stream Decker. D four. Submit. Nice! Can't lose! Best player here, day nine, signing up to win. There it is. GG, 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 GG. Full of tricks as you thought about using that overlay that Nox uses. It looks extremely clean and minimalistic. I'm a, I, I don't even know what this is. I have no clue! cardboard.live um well yeah i mean i i'm pretty content with the way that stream decker combo with um deck master works it just got the new update so it's super super busteroni oh my god are we up against jesper esper esper Esper, I'm talking about Esper. Esper, Esper, Esper. I am a really big threatening lady who. Pardon me. Ah, oh, you bloody bastard. Okay, so these decks, I think. Don't run a planes? I think is right. I think is right. I think it doesn't run a planes. Okay. Can't remember which basic land it didn't run. Nice, that's so good to see. Oh my god. I okay, I really am loving two star of extinctions in the main. Pretty much gonna get Thout erasured. I'm so surprised to see this. I've got time. I'm so surprised. Nim Elfin says, will you revisit Slay the Spire when they add the fourth character? I, I think I'm going to hit that with a highly likely. I'm going to give that probability of yes out of ten. I think that game is fantastic. Can't stand the art. Not even a little bit. Alright, well, the play is clear. You got it. I actually think that 
Uh, you know, this is a claim, less so like an evidence-based statement, but I, I definitely think that Slate Aspire substantially hurts their... Uh, the, the the amount of people that will ever play the game due to the fact that the art is so ugly. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say so ugly as much as I mean, there's a certain charm to it, but I, I just really I really don't like the art, and it, it made me really not want to play the game for a long time. Art style is always subjective. Uh, that's actually not a true statement. You you can uh, it, it's subjective in that different people do like different art styles, but you can make objective statements about who likes certain types of styles and which one will be more popular, which one will be less popular, and all that good stuff. Hello. Alright, surprise. Counter! Target activated ability. Clever. Now what? Not prepared for this. Like, if you have, uh, you know, there's certain, like, bright, colorful aesthetics that more people enjoy and will be more drawn to than certain, uh, we'll just call them more abstract aesthetics, for instance. This would be fine. this down. So while it is true that all art does have a subjective component to it, um, yeah, I guess I, I guess it's really stupid for me to say, oh no, it's not true, it's subjective. Art obviously is subjective about who likes what, and who doesn't, and so on and so forth, but there are patterns among humanity that are really important to accept and acknowledge as being true. In the same way that, yeah, jokes are kind of subjective, but... All that said, it's still pretty damn true that there are jokes that will make a lot of people laugh and jokes that really won't make very many people laugh. And so on and so forth. I think the Slate of Spire, one of the greatest games I've played in a million billion years. Oh! One, two, so four and seven. Uh, I don't quite have enough. So I'm going to comfortably... Do this. I've learned a bunch of new burn spells to try on. Go get them, buddy. Let me tell you, Chandra is so good in this matchup, Bay Chandra. I suppose that's how Contain it your rage. So this part is like such an amazing game, but yeah, I think the art just like super fucking hurts it. And I don't even think it's like an art skill thing. I don't even think it's like, oh yeah, they have some talentless artist who's bad, blur, blur, blur. You know, it, it's that I just think there needs to be a working on the look and the cohesion and sculpting and improving it. And I think that if that happens, oh my god, I think that there's, they can immediately get a, ugh, fuck. Hey, huh. ugh. At least there's no big Teferi in there, huh? Hey, huh. Uh, Chandra Awaken Inferno, that sucks a little bit. It does suck. It's a sucky thing, gotta admit. Yeah, I think there's a... a Freckin' crap load of Betty feats that could be gained. So I think the, there's gonna be a minus three on our poor friend Rekindling Phoenix, who only wanted to help. <laughs> it's 
sad to see him go, but that's all right. Oh. <laughs> Don't want him meowing. Fucking sick, dude. All right. Time to turn up the heat. Wow, that was a pretty bad command the dreadhorde from our opponent. Woohoo! Yeah. Heck yeah. Jarkul says I played Slay the Spire at the same time as Into the Breach. I was inspired by how similar they were for games with such totally different combat systems. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's actually a great point. So, so I wrote uh, a pen and paper RPG. Combat system based on them has been really fun to play. Yeah, actually that's a really astute observation how similar the combat systems of those games are. Specifically, I feel like those games and a few others have done what I think is a brilliant, brilliant step. Let's slow this down. They make it so that you see what your opponent is going to do next turn. So, each turn is a little miniature puzzle. How are you going to solve this little puzzle here? No. Uh. Throw another punch, and you're going to get burned. <laughs> Great. Great. So I do this first. Let's start at a sizzle and see if you make it to the inferno. I like this. This it seems really good to me. What's that smell? Oh, it's you burning. Say hi to my fiery friend. I, mean, I didn't do the ordering correctly, but I think I did everything. As well as well as a turn could be done. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I'd, I'd like to contrast this into the breach style system with like XCOM, where in XCOM, I feel like I'm always taking three steps and putting things on Overwatch. Take three steps, put things on Overwatch, right? Like, because I, I mean, oh my god. Or like when I was playing Final Fantasy VII on this channel, you saw me just chuckling about, like, all right, I have a good plan. Oh, well, guess my plan just got completely blown out by the fact that my. The enemy's just gonna randomly completely murder everything this turn. I guess I wish I would have known that, like. <laughs> no. That's, yeah, that's pretty good, huh? Yeah, that's pretty good, huh? Can do this together. I will kill this one. Ever see a volcano Yeah, but I mean like oh yeah, here's my magic's another one. Like, you know, you just you just don't know what things are gonna be doing in the next turn. So you're sort of accounting for this like really huge amount of possibilities and it makes you I'll call them small movements. Makes you do really small movements all over the place. Goodbye. And I just love how in Slay the Spire and Into the Breach, you start to really... I mean, you're thinking one turn ahead, what's going to happen the following turn, but in this turn, you're just like, okay. But how do I do this huge mass of shit together? Like...
That is so good. That is so good, dude. So the flame sweeps come out. What comes in? Right, I think this seems right. Probably an Ugin. Fry, why not Zoidberg? That is an important question, Beer Man Man. This is something I think we all need to stop and talk about and consider. Oh, man. I mean, for as much as I've been haranguing him a little bit about the art style and Slay the Spire, Slay the Spire actually is uh, one of the greatest games released in the last few years, like 100%. I won't keep it. I will keep it. God, wasn't that just a satisfying game? This big red deck produces just such satisfying games. Mm-hmm. 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 If, if my opponent picks off this, I think this is probably the correct one to get. This one is also a pretty good one to get. None of these are, like, amazing snatches. Kept two lander with a thought erasure. It's actually a pretty reasonable decision. Ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. D spark. Oh. says, in that last game, I would use the treasure to clear the Basilica Bell Haunt with Chandra's Tribe, then swung for six with the Elementals and given the opponent an emblem with four life left. Why do you think having the extra draw is better? I appreciate the way you phrase your entire question, Dracula. It's really great here. I'm going to give a whole bunch of context to stuff. Look at this. Drawn cards, working hard. I feel like I've seen this all before. Um, part of me very badly just wants to Star of Extinction all this stuff, but I, I mean, actually think I'm going to chuck the star. Let's see what this is. Let's just get all this out of here. Oh yeah. Boy, boy, that does feel good, huh? That does feel great. Um, uh, the reasoning is uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, my opponent, I believe, has a, a pretty reasonable amount of heal in the deck. So I would rather be in a situation where I can do even more punishment in some following turn than sort of pigeonhole myself into maximizing the win probability here when I don't actually think that it's that likely my opponent stays at four life after that. That's about it. There's heals in the deck. That's that's about the sim simple statement of the logic. Hello. Do -do -do. I did this in the wrong order. You pretty much always want to activate the loyalty ability of a planeswalker that's on the board first.
Because if, for instance, I play both of these and then I cast a plus on some of them, the opponent could respond and hit the other one and I would have not gotten the opportunity to do anything about it. At least I tried. At least you did. Clever girl. Kadorn says, Cavalier Flame always impresses me when it comes down. Yeah, I think I overcut Cavalier Thorn. You know, let's let's just draw second second Chandra. Or not. You have got to be kidding me with this auto tapper right now. Leave some red open, man. What am I going to respond with a colorless shock? Come on, let me at least represent it. Peeling our bodies off that zero plat four tribal, oh. or not zero plat four tribal, zero plat four <laughs> wall. Metal, metal two in chat typed exile tribal esper, <laughs> and then I saw that and just said tribal out loud. My brain hath malfunctioned. No. Yes. Destroy target, land, starve extinction, deals 20 damage to each creature in Planeswalker. Ah, oh, yes! Yes! T Paul 1004. So if you played me Lotus Field Blood Sun decks. Now that actually could be such a fascinating idea in this deck. Uh, short answer is yeah, I have played some of those decks. They are. Hash brown type. Uh, what I will additionally note and say and state. Oh, you farter. This is a difficult deck to win against. <clears throat> it's an interesting idea to actually just put like three or four lotus fields. In the other one, I mean that that could actually be pre pretty tight. I don't think we're gonna win this because we get a Rekindling Phoenix down. We're gonna win this by picking off diligent excavators. Next turn, we're going to... Yeah, well, uh, so the way that our opponent's deck works, for any of you have not seen, they play a whole bunch of legendary cards, use the Diligent Excavator to fill their own graveyard up with lots and lots and lots of things. And once they have enough legendary creatures in the graveyard, they use the card Kethis, that I like to call Keithith. Keithith, the Hidden Hand. And the whole point of Keithith is that Keithith allows the opponent to play all these legendaries again from the graveyard. And then upon being able to play all these legendaries from the graveyard, Diligent Excavator says whenever you cast a historic spell, target player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. They just recast from their graveyard shitloads and shitloads and shitloads of things, causing me to mill out. So it's a sort of like, I'm gonna mill myself first, and then I'm gonna mill you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I don't think I actually play this Lava Coil yet. I think I need to wait for Diligent Excavators. Or Keithus himself. Kinda farting sucks. Do I bring back... Let me just get this one out of here. I think I just auto lose to this deck like pretty much every single time. It's just so difficult for me to see any way out of this. So that'll let me cast Baby Chandra as well. Good. How the hell can I count? How? How, do, how, how does one count? I'm going to do this out of embarrassment. It's not the correct thing to do, but I have to do it. I'm just embarrassed. What do we have in here? Sentinel Totem. Yeah, Sentinel Totem might actually be the only way to do this one properly. Yeah, maybe I should just start banging out some Sentinel Totems. Yeah, and then I'm gonna play this. Goes to the grave. I'm gonna tap this. Oh, you had the other Mox Amber in hand, you bastard. It's possible we still live. My hope is that I can go land Chandra, Chandra. Goodbye, my chicken. Ow. We might be okay here. We might, we might barely be able to be okay here. Because this is only three extra mana, and depending upon how many things pop out here, it could be okay. Alright, we're going to give you a quick timeout. Both Akaya might be the play here, depending upon what gets in there. Gonna hang out for a second. This is this card is the one to always try to get on out. Ruid says, "How is it not infinite if Mox Amber costs zero and generates mana, and you just keep recasting them from your graveyard?" Because this says, "Until end of turn, each legendary card in your graveyard gains." You may play this card from your graveyard. So the Mox Amber here doesn't have that text. When it goes to the graveyard, it still doesn't have that text. In other words, you must continue to exile different legendaries from your graveyard, so that way the Moxes can regain the ability to um, be played from the graveyard.
So it looks like our opponent is going for the Oath, Kindot, Oath of Kaya style win condition. And there's one, two, And that can definitely loop two more times. Nice. Very, very difficult deck to go against because we don't really have any interaction against it. Let's see here. Chandra's Triumph. I think we take out all of them, get in the lava coils. The fries could actually be helpful here. Flame Sweep Super is not helpful. What, what do we even put in? Just, just a big old pile of fries, maybe? Because the sort of fascinating issue um, with the opponent's deck is obviously Diligent Excavator is the thing that's making this all work. However, um, if we kill it, Lazav the Multifarious can turn into a Diligent Excavator. And uh, for any of you who are also unfamiliar with the history of that card, Kethis, and this deck, this Kethis deck was the real all-star of the recent Mythic Championship qualifier on Arena. I think I just hold this back for now. Maybe. No, I think I actually need to kill as fast as humanly possible. So getting damage in right now is important. I can also... Lava Coil into Lava Coil, which is another pretty substantial benefit. Hmm. Malissimo. This deck can also just kind of completely fall apart. Because... doesn't really matter for us. Hey, these little guys are great. Block me, I dare ya. Wow, amazing. Incroyable. Sucks a whole bunch. But this is actually fine. I'm telling Mother uh, Lily on you. Uh, uh. Yeah, this card's this card's a real issue. Very strong card. Very strong card. Three fairy. All right, my turn. I'm not going to scry. I'm just going to fry. Don't worry. I brought company. We will meet again. Rafa Benz, do you have any plans to show up on the streamer showdown for MTGA? I would say that um, if you're ever curious about my involvement in something, uh, I mean, the, the, the simple answer is it's never my choice. I never get to choose. Unless unless it's literally on Day 9 TV, I have no say in it. I'm late to meditation anyway. Oh, yes. Flibble fuck. Zero saying it. Huh. 
Rob Ben says, okay, fair enough, thank you for the answer. I wish... Oh, fuck! I wish I could actually have a more satisfying answer. I hate playing against this fucking deck, man. What, what, this, what this deck does is nothing, and then just goes infinite relatively quickly. <laughs> fuck, man. See, I almost prefer playing against Nexus of Fate. Because Nexus of Fate is at least taking multiple turns in a row. So, you know, my I have a goal to get to Chandra, things like this. This deck, again, was one of the all-stars in the Mythic Championship Qualifier. I actually think that this is probably well, top two or three decks in the meta, if not... Just straight up, number one. No. That's actually such a smart play by the opponent. Can we just take a, a moment to appreciate that move right there? Which is, play the Othakaya, turn it into an elemental, attack, giving me the chance to let the elemental die. At which point, responding. With a second of the guy. I mean, that's that's pretty slick. Here we go. I feel like the the tech that you have to have against this would be Ashiok. Also does it. Oh, that would be so cool to see Leyline of the Void. So, it looks like we're dead. I'm gonna do like this, and then like this. Investigating what we get. Yeah, it looks like certainly the most played deck right now is Four Color Legends. At around 12% of the meta. Counter to this is just kill it really fast. Exile things from enemy graveyards. I mean, for instance, we could potentially win here by just getting, like, you know, some pips on this and Malissimo just not not really getting there. No, I am not making this up as I go. A nice play. A very nice play. Yeah, I think that our deck will just always lose to that Legends deck. Is there any, like, Exile from Graveyard? Actually, I'm curious about this. Uh, let's see. If, if I go into here... What do we think about that? That's pretty tight, huh? If I keep encountering this, I'll actually probably probably cut this flame sweep and put in a sentinel totem. Scrabbling Cross, Graft Graft Digger's Cage. Uh, it's important to see why this doesn't do anything. 
Creature cards and graveyards and libraries can't enter the battlefield. Players can't cast spells from graveyards or libraries. This appears as though it would shut the enemy deck down, but what they do is they just slowly control the board. And then they just play three fairy, bounce it, and then just do everything they were doing before. Um, let's try one of these. Export. Actually, it's five. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'm gonna get my afternoon coffee, and that is what's gonna let us win. There's no way we can lose after I've caffeinated. Scrabbling claws is better. Is this Nexus C? What? I've never even heard of that card. This this won't do. This won't do because um, it's so unbelievably slow. Um, and if there's any non-legendaries in the enemy library, they just exile those. And so I'd probably only be able to activate this about three times. All right. I'm going to go get afternoon coffee. Yeah. All right. Let's paste this deck first. Deck paste. The new name of this deck is Nox's Big Red with Assorted Spices. What? 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 Wait, submit? And it says... Name uses banned words? Okay, I'll just say V6. Alright, that seemed to work. Okay, now I'm going to use the restroom. That's the wrong button. That's the right button. 